I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. Over the past four months, our lives have changed in ways we could never have imagined. Life should not be carrying on as normal. I know these decisions are not easy, but they are necessary. Our NHS workers have been on the front line fighting a new and deadly virus. The rest of the world was running from it in the healthcare and the key workers were stepping towards it and that's, that's daunting. I just felt so weak and, and just breathless, just, you know, just completely breathless. Thousands of lives in Scotland have been lost and others changed forever. If we could have all just been there on our passing, I think I would feel better. Hey, is everything okay at the moment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there anything to report from high dependency? Dr Abby Gunn usually works as a stroke consultant, but when Covid hit, she stepped up to lead the strategic response at Inverclyde Royal Hospital. Oh, nicely settled today, yeah, so good. we're fine. Lovely. The local authority Inverclyde has the highest death rates for Covid. That must have been at the forefront of your mind. It was, absolutely. We have a deprived population locally. We anticipated that we were going to have deaths. We had seen that from across the world. But COVID arrived early in Inverclyde. Our first case that we saw in the hospital was tested positive on the 12th of March, two weeks ahead of lockdown. And by that time, it had spread through the community. Can you remember where you were when lockdown was announced and how you felt? Yeah, I was relieved. Um, I was relieved because I have two children um, and they were at school and as I saw it building and saw it building down south and moving north arrived in Inverclyde, I was concerned that lockdown perhaps hadn't happened at an optimum time because we knew it was already in our community. So we're walking into the critical care unit. This obviously would have been really busy at the peak. This unit originally was a two-bedded intensive care unit that went up to six beds. At the peak of our pandemic, there was just only COVID patients admitted to the hospital. Every ward and every room that you went to had COVID-19 within the hospital. Nurse Ailey Jack was one of the many frontline medical staff who quickly adjusted to the most difficult of circumstances. Everybody was stressed. They were worried about their family. They were worried about what they were going to come into. It was so different to what we were used to. We didn't really have a lot of information. So we really didn't know what to expect. Would you say there's anything in particular that stood out as being perhaps the most difficult part of the pandemic for you personally? Patients who were at end of life and you couldn't have their family member um, with them initially. Um, that was very difficult. There was fear, fear of the unknown, fear of how bad it was going to be, fear of, for our patients that weren't going to make it, what, what kind of deaths would they have and would we be able to make them feel better and give them a good death? Hi folks, I'm currently in um, the COVID-19 unit at the Western General. Where I was supposed to just come back this evening, I was testing positive. Karen McCabe was at home in Edinburgh when she fell ill. It wasn't long before she was struggling to breathe. So you felt at that stage you were going to die. The feeling's actually indescribable. I couldn't inhale and I couldn't exhale. There was a pain in my chest, which I later found out was as a result of the COVID. And it was just so sore to try and breathe. But you, it's like as if somebody was... Um, you know, if, you, if, you're breathing through a, if you're breathing through a tube and somebody puts their finger over it or takes it half off, that's, that's what it felt like. It's if you just, you were getting just a tiny, tiny amount of air, but not anywhere near enough. Karen, who has diabetes and a neurological condition, went to Edinburgh's Western General and quickly found herself in the intensive care unit. I actually pleaded to put me on a ventilator, knowing the risks of it's 50-50 whether you come off it or not. I was just like, you just please just make this stop, you have to help me. And, and I honestly did not think that day that I would come out. I honestly didn't. And I'd sent Robert messages for the kids and things like that. I got the leg. Yeah, I wanted to be back home because um, she gives me really nice cuddles and kisses. Through my own mind was she wasn't coming home. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking she wasn't going to recover from this because of her underlying conditions, because of, there was healthy people passing away from this condition. 
I was petrified. After a week on a non-invasive ventilator in an isolated room, Karen left ICU. Because I had been in this room the whole time, you don't see what's going on. And it was one of these kind of, oh my goodness moments. There was a sea of beds with patients, men, all men in them. They were lined up together and it was just, it just hit you all of a sudden. You know, just seeing those, these men and thinking as well that, you know, possibly half, if not more, wouldn't come out. You know, they wouldn't come home. I wish you all the best and the girls. Margaret Shaw was one of the thousands of people who lost her life to COVID. She died in a care home in Fife. It was quite drastic with my mum. It was quite quick. The few times that I'd went in to see her, as I said, she was just in her bed unresponsive. I mean, that must have just been so upsetting. It was. You want your family there beside you. You want them there beside your mum on her, you know, her final, her final journey. One of the most shocking aspects of the pandemic has been the number of deaths in care homes. My mum didn't have any pain relief. She didn't have any oxygen. Um, I mean, they were coming round every, I think it was every hour, and um, putting the moisture sponge in round her mouth. I feel guilty because if I'd known the severity of the virus, I would have brought her home. If we could have all just been with her, on her passing, I think I would feel better. Or if she'd died in natural causes. Scotland is easing out of lockdown, slowly opening up again. The virus is contained but still present. Our NHS is prepared for the possibility of another wave. I would say that we would be well positioned for a second wave if that were to come. But when COVID was at its peak, it changed the lives of thousands of families. I just feel like the care homes were forgotten about. The only thing certain at the moment is that we'll have to live with this virus for some time yet. Will we ever go back to normal? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs>